Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to another episode of Celebrating Act 2. Today, John Coleman and I have a great pleasure of being with John Mariani, the virtual gourmet. Hi, John Mariani. Hi, guys. John, good to see you. Hey, uh, the last couple of uh, sessions, we've been talking about your trip to Ireland. It's been great. But with this, I, I have a million questions, but mostly let's talk about the hotels in Ireland. Uh, you went to Dublin, and I think you said then Galway. Um, you stayed most of the time in Dublin, if I'm not correct. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, How many well, hotels did you see? And, and tell us about them. Well, I, 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 I've been to Ireland many times, so I stayed at many hotels. And uh, so they are, if you're looking for top flight, five-star, four-star, three-star hotels, um, anywhere in Europe, uh, Ireland has some of the best. And um, they range from the famous Shelburne, which has uh, been uh, been around for more than 100 years. And it's their classic, beautiful Victorian uh, hotel, which is where uh, Oscar Wilde used to stay and anybody coming to Dublin would stay uh, in the Shelburne. And um, because of uh, COVID and because of the recession, a lot of these places have turned over. And, you know, COVID, one of the blessings of COVID was that, all right, this place has to be renovated. We were going to paint the bathrooms anyway, so let's rip out the whole bathroom and do it right. Well, the Shelburne is one of those places that has uh, never been better, never been more beautiful, never been more popular. Um, you walk into it, and if you go to the left, there's a great uh, on site uh, uh, pub there beautiful place. There's a terrific formal dining room beyond that. And then to the right is a place just for afternoon tea, which was filled on a re recent sunny afternoon. So the Shelburne's uh, one of the top of the line, and it would have been the top of the line, my choice for the top of the line um, for years, but it has been joined by others. There is the Marion Hotel, which has a two-star Michelin restaurant in it called uh, Patrick Gibo. And that's just around the corner from the Shelburne. And that's a smaller, uh, quieter, uh, not that the Shelburne is, is loud, but it's in more in the center of town. <clears throat> and the Marion is a, a very fine place. Uh, it was built kind of from scratch, was gutted from another building so they could make the, make the uh, bedrooms larger and really, really nice bathrooms. So that's been around for a good 20 years and uh, is still one of the stalwarts there. Um, Bono and U2 bought a, a hotel called the Clarence uh, about 20 years ago. And while they still own the building, they just sold that um, to another company um, and they have renovated it. And there's a good good restaurant in there also. And that's right smack on the Liffey, Liffey River in, um, in a section of town. Uh, which is popular with youth and uh, a more youthful scene. Um, the rooms to be a little cheaper than the Shelburne or the Marion. Um, the Four Seasons opened just outside of town, a splendid kind of country resort hotel, which is now an intercontinental uh, hotel, but that's splendid and it's outside of town, just enough so, um, I don't mean 10 miles outside of town, I mean like two to three, so it's nice and out of the way and very quiet, set on, on greenery and so forth. Um, there, now, this time I stayed at a couple of places I'd not been, but one place that I like very, very much. It's a kind of a boutique hotel. It only has about 110 rooms or so, and it's right off Grafton Street, the main drag in Dublin, and it's called the Brooks Hotel. And one of the things about the Brooks, it's a pretty standard hotel. Um, it's been around for a while, so its rooms are not huge, but they've been redone. The bathroom is not huge, but it's well lighted, All of the, has all of the amenities. Um, has a restaurant downstairs called Francesca, a very nice compliment. All these hotels, by the way, you get a complimentary breakfast and uh, either, either a classic uh, Irish breakfast or um, continental. Um, so they have a good one there. But the thing about... Uh, Brooks Hotel is that it has a concierge who is never behind the desk. He's right inside the front door. He greets you and immediately you are his friend. And his name is Connell, uh, Colin Connell. And he's a man now in his 70s, white-haired. 
he looks like a happy uh, version of Samuel Beckett, who never looked happy. Samuel Beckett never looked happy. Um, <laughs> Samuel Beckett once uh, reported a guy, a friend of his, says, Sam, isn't this a beautiful day? And he says, yeah, it's a beautiful day. And he says, doesn't it make you happy just to be alive, Sam? And he says, well, I wouldn't go that far. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the exact opposite of that. And you, be, you really become his friend. He's a jokester. He knows just how far he can go with the jokes with each individual person. So if you ask him any street, where is this street? Where is this? Is this a good pub? Where do I get the best fish and chips? Uh, how do, do I need tickets to get into here? How do I get tickets to get into here? Um, who's a cab driver? I'll fix it up with a cab driver. I'll call my friend Donnie, and Donnie will be here in three minutes. You don't have to get you, but he knows the whole town like the back of his head. I mean, Colin is just a treasure. Um, for him alone, I would book at uh, the Brooks Hotel uh, any chance I get. So that's a good place. Um, I also stayed uh, a bit uh, upscale from that, the Westbury Hotel, which is in the Doyle Collection. Doyle Collection is Irish owned. They have one in uh, they have one in uh, Washington D.C., um, but it's a small collection, very, very, very fine. And this is also off Grafton Street. Um, and downstairs there's a brasserie, uh, and then up this wonderful staircase you come into this lounge called the Gallery with terrific art and pillars. And you sit down there, and if your room isn't ready in the morning, because um, you're just on your old jet lag, you sit down to an Irish breakfast in this sunny, sunny, gorgeous room, uh, well served by an international wait staff, and uh, have your have your eggs and your streaky bacon and your black pudding and your potatoes and uh, your orange juice and coffee or any of six or seven teas and uh, Irish bread and Irish soda bread, and you're going to be very happy. And then you upstairs to the rooms, which are state of the art, uh, very modern, big California type bathrooms with uh, tubs and showers and all of the amenities. Of course, all of these places have perfect Wi-Fi and uh, and uh, and television wide flat screen uh, televisions and so forth. Um, so everything is up to date in, in Ireland in that respect. And then you go downstairs at the Westbury for, uh, and I'll be talking about restaurants at some other point. Um, and you go downstairs, which is a place called Wilds, which is named after Oscar Wilde, who never dined there. But it's a modern Irish restaurant, very, very popular. Um, wonderful food, terrific wine list. So that's the Westbury. And then last but certainly not least, if I were a businessman or woman who was going to be in town for two days and have a lot of meetings and so forth, the best business hotel to stay in, I found, was the Fitzwilliam, which is right across the street from St. Stephen's Green. So you've got a great view. Every, every room gets a very, very good view. And right on the corner of Grafton Street, which is the main uh, drag with uh, boutiques and uh, and uh, stores and and, uh, and uh, statue of Molly Malone, who wheeled the wheelbarrow through the oh, streets. Char, char of car, oh. Yeah. And also the Fitzwilliam Hotel has one of the recognized finest uh, uh, restaurants uh, in the city of Dublin and in Ireland and the UK um, called Grover's Alley. And I had the pleasure of dining there on just exquisite food, great wine list. So there's a whole slew of places my American friends uh, should uh, take under advisement. Uh, and then you could slay, you know, stay down the line. They've got Marriott's and, and they've got all, all the brands. They've got Holiday Inns and Hilton's and so forth. And there's a lot of activity uh, across the Liffey, Liffey River, which is the north side of the river, which was the most impoverished uh, part of Dublin for a long time. Now it's being lined with new um, glass box buildings, a lot of banks, and down by what they call Docklands. And there are some new, very, very good um, uh, new hotels there. Um, one of them, which is called the uh, Mason, M-A-Y-S-O-N, uh, which is young and youthful, a lot of red brick, with a good pub there and a good restaurant called Wiley's. So um, no stinting on uh, hotels in uh, the city of Dublin. In, I, in in Galway, where I was for only two days, I stayed in only one place, which was called the Hardenton, Hard, Hardman Hotel. And that was a charmer, very old. Uh, it, the best thing is that it is steps 
from the train station. So you get off the the trail, the, the rails, and you just go out, and boom, there's the hotel right there. Um, again, renovated uh, while we were there. There were guys painting walls in the hallways and so forth. Um, wonderful pub, uh, wonderful restaurant, um, very good service. But the <laughs> funny thing is, is you go down, and there's a lot of rain in Ireland, you might have heard, a lot of rain. And when it wasn't um, sunny, it was raining uh, every single day. So uh, we'd go out and we'd go down the front desk because I noticed we didn't have an umbrella in our room, which every um, hotel in the entire world has an umbrella in the closet, but it wasn't there. It must have been forgotten or something. So may I have a, an umbrella, please? A brolly, as you call them over here. No, sir, we don't have any umbrellas here. Oh, why don't you, are they all taken? Well, no, you know, people in Galway, we don't use umbrellas. <laughs> And I go outside, they're walking around, they got hoodies on, they got raincoats over their heads and stuff, newspapers, no umbrellas. So I went to a local <laughs> farm and I said, just give me a cheap umbrella, one of those little fold up things, 10 bucks, 10 euros. And I said, fine, I've got an umbrella. Put it up, of course it didn't work. Threw it out next morning. <laughs> you know, let that be a lesson. Bring your own broly to Galway. <laughs> Well, Dublin sounds like a wonderful city, um, and it's, it's I guess, by comparison, let's say to London and New York, it's not that big a city, is it? It's comparable very much to Boston. Yeah. Um, it, it, total size is probably about the same. Population is probably about the same. And you can walk through um, and see all of the main spots all the main sites in Dublin, from Powers Court to Trinity College, shop on Nassau Street, um, Grafton Street, see the James Joyce House, see the Patrick Pierce um, Museum, the National Museum, the Book of Kells, all of that, uh, uh, St. Patrick's Cathedral, where Jonathan Swift was the dean, all of that can be visited, if you don't stop <laughs> at any yeah. other, in two hours walk. Um, yeah. There's a, an Irish whiskey museum, there's the Guinness Museum, all of it is within a walking distance. Unless you go with my friend whom I went with, Walter Bagley, who can't walk six steps without complaining. But So go with some good shoes and bring your umbrella. Umbrella, right. Yes, yes. <laughs> all right, well, listen, don't, uh, don't knock Walter's knees. He's had them for a long time. And he has to deal with it, okay? So... Uh, wonderful tour of good hotels, good to great hotels in Dublin. That's great. Um, I, I'm impressed. You rattled off almost a dozen hotels. And for a city that size, I think that, and of course, there's many, many more, you know, chains and things like that, as you mentioned. But for a city that size to have that many good hotels of the quality you're talking about, I think is, is unusual. Maybe Maybe it's just me. You know, no matter where you travel in the world, no matter what we talk about uh, during our conversations, I'm the lucky one because I'm always with two guys whose Irish eyes are always smiling. <laughs> For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.